on Plug and Play Productions, we have a singer, musician, producer, DJ, and studio owner, guitar player for three bands, Muskoka Knights, Wits End, and the Row Ro City Rockers. We bring you Jimmy Graham, a.k.a. Jimmy G, which won a developing deal with Warner Reprise Records in the late 80s. The band fashion also during that time, he released a top two singles, not one, but two, Going Places and Love That Girl, which cracked the top 100 Canadian single charts. Thanks for having me in your studio, Jimmy G. Yep. Here at In the Basement, The Loaded Gun, The Man with Three <laughs> Bands, The King of Sting, In the Basement <laughs> Records. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. John. Good man. Thanks for the good coffee. Have... You're great. Oh, well, thank that's you. That's a good cup of coffee. That's the first rule of having a studio, man. you got to know how to gonna brew, brew up yourself a good up. cup of coffee. Right? <laughs> Keep the clients happy. Excellent. Keep the clients happy. Well, thanks for coming down and hanging out here, man. Oh, man. I'm, yeah, I was it's been gassed. a while. We've been I, talking about I'm... doing this for a while. Exactly. A long while. So yeah. you got to uh, make an announcement later about uh, about why... some new stuff coming about out. some new yeah. stuff. We're going to talk Absolutely. about that soon. Yeah. Yeah. So what's it take to be a um, recording artist? Well, I, I don't know what, I'm still trying to figure that question out. <laughs> um, but as far as like Indie Basement Records started back in 1995 when I first bought this house, right? And then I, I, start, I tore apart the, uh, the basement and started reconfiguring it. Uh, the control room, this is the control room here, but it used to be in a, in a back bedroom in this basement. And then this whole area was the live room. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, recorded some bands, did a couple albums that way, and then I totally gutted it and then reconfigured it. So that this is, you walk into the control room, which is where we're at now, and then the live room is past this point, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, this place has got some history, man. I've recorded a lot of bands in this. Tell us the biggest yeah, artist. Yeah. The, one of the, the, the biggest, well, actually the biggest probably was not, e was not even a musical artist. A basketball player. Oh. Yeah, so I, I was doing a rap project, and these kids came, and it's like, yeah, we want to do a couple of rap tunes, blah, 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 blah. And uh, our my my uh, my uncle is bringing us over, and mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I look out the window, and here's this, like, Mercedes pulls up Ooh. in the driveway. These two kids get out, and this real tall dude gets out, and the three of them come in, and, you know, they're in there doing their little rap thing. It was just like a little rap project it wasn't any big deal right but he's sitting there and he's his legs all taped up right and I said what happened to your leg he said ah, I heard it I said what'd you do he said nah, I twisted it playing basketball and I said basketball you know yeah and he says yeah I play for the Pistons man I'm Grand Hill <laughs> oh, wow. yeah so That's Grand Hill was actually impressive. actually sitting right where you are uh, but so that as far as fame goes, that's where that goes. But as far as local, I mean, I've done everybody here from uh, Elad's Guitar Army to Problem to the Solution. Um, geez, I've got a whole bunch of. Uh, I made sure I had these compilation. I did like five indie basement compilations. Sure, Big Daddy A and the Mervs. Big Daddy A and the yeah. Mervs. Uh, uh, Can you picture see? picture this? Oh, Ran right. Randy LaFrancois, who went by Randy Lee at the time, Johnny El Camito, which is a, just a great album that we did down here. Um, a lot, lot of artists that were like all through the 90s and into the 2000s, all recorded here, all recorded here. Like, if, like I said, I, we did five, uh, here I'll get you one with uh, an actual cover on it. Like, it went from like 1998 to 2002. Look at that. Yeah. Can, can you find these online? Like on. Uh, you know what? I, I mean, I had to dig around just to find these in the studio. Look at that. Yeah, they were. The they, man. They were sold back in Dr. Disc the, back in the day. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. This was. In the basement, basement records. Has it been always um, in the basement? It's always been in the basement. Uh, Solid State played down here, uh, recorded here, Lunacy, 330 Dirties, uh, Mercedes, Ossible Channel, Chrysalid, wow. uh, Lisa Says, uh, just a ton of bands, everybody was through here. And uh, it got to the point, uh, like I, I did five of these compilations, and uh, by 2002, 2003, the advent of having your own personal studio had become so uh uh, just just everywhere right everybody had their own recording gear so you know people started just recording at home and 
I was like, you know what, I kind of had enough of living in a basement for like five or six years because I never left here. I was always down here working. Um, so that's how it came about. Yeah, yeah. Um, True story. Yep, yep. And uh, as, you know, as the years went on, I went, got back into live bands and, and doing some different things and just pet projects down here and doing my own stuff. Um, and come full circle, uh, during the lockdown that happened a couple of years ago, Tell well, us about this, uh, yeah, well, I had a, had all this gear down here, and I upgraded everything. Like, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I was sitting down here. I'm going, what am I going to do? Because I'm just sitting at home by myself, bored. And I thought I got all this recording equipment. Let's make an album. So wow, this is yeah. what came out. Jimmy G. Uh, well, it was this one is Jimmy G. and the Rose City Rockers. The reason why I called it the Rose City Rockers is because uh, me and Mike Herford, way back in the day, got a gig at uh, Lucky's for St. Patrick's Day. And <laughs> we got to the gig and we was like, we don't have a band name. And I said, what about the Rose City Rockers? He said, yeah, okay, since it was just four guys from the Rose City, right? And that's how that name came about. Uh, and then as time went on, I thought, well, I want to keep the name. So Mike and I duped it out and he said, yeah, you can keep the name, which is good of him. Um, and uh, so I started inviting some people in to help me with this record. Uh, Michelle Morrow, vocalist, Chuck Lambrick, um, Big Tony Rose, Cliff McPherson, Chris Marantad, Joe Trokey, uh, Mike Jubinville. So I got, and I'm, I don't know, hopefully I'm not missing anybody. Uh, but yeah, just brought those guys in to, you know, flesh out some keyboard stuff and do some vocals on it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool album and this, this is my gift to you, my friend. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I don't know if you still have a CD player, but... <laughs> uh, no, computer. Computer. Well, you can put I, it in a... Yeah. yeah, so long as it's got a disk drive, you can put yeah, it in yeah, there yeah. and make the songs I, off it. And I got uh, old you little go. ghetto blasters. I, play, I used there, to have yep. 200 CDs. I got rid of them. Right. I got rid of all my <laughs> CDs. Uh, I feel I'm limited now. I'm yeah. moving, so... I got rid of my studio, but that's another story. Well, see, and this, this is the thing with studios, right? I mean, you record all this music, and then how do you get it? I mean, you can put it on Spotify, and you can put it on YouTube, and blah, 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 blah. But then you have to actually remind people to go listen to it, and people are so busy, they don't, right? And it's not that they don't want to. It's like, man, I got no time for that, <laughs> right? Exactly. I mean, I barely listen to the music that I produce, right? right? Just because you, you just don't have time, right? Yes. Um, so it's 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 one of those things that the recording industry, it's, it's one of those things that you go in, you do what you do, you get it out of your system. And if nothing else, you've made a, a soundtrack, and you probably experienced this with your own studio, that you make music that feels good to you, right? Exactly. And it doesn't matter if anybody else ever hears That's it. That's right. It's so your long own. as so long as you've yes, done that I self expression have some of my stuff on, right? on soundcloud and yeah, on the yeah. internet yeah. and it's for your own pleasure yeah well it's, it's music funny it makes the world go around <laughs> yeah yeah well and, uh, and 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 you know as well as anybody i mean the only reason people hear the stuff that they hear is because there's so much money and there's companies behind it that are just forcing it down people's throats right. but like your music my music i mean have you ever heard my music i've never heard yours right and and there's a reason for that it's just right. like there's so much yeah well and and life is just consuming right and mm -hmm. and if you're not if it's not playing in the background by somebody else when you've got the radio on you'll probably never hear it so unless you're physically going out and looking for it you know, it's a tough haul, but I mean, recording is one of those things that you just do it because you love it. Of course. Right. And there's so many avenues uh, you can go just do it on your phone. Mm. Now they got lavalier mics and they got uh, all these a uh, apps that you can put yep. all your music right into the yep. phone. And of course, you got your laptop and you got uh, what kind of, uh, speaking of laptops and computers, what kind of. Uh, program do you use? Well, I'm glad you asked because we we're going to get to that. Uh, and, and that was a perfect time to do it. So basically, as far as the studio goes, uh, like I've got keyboards on this side. I've got mission control ba back here. I've got all the, the monitors, JBLs, IK multimedias, Mackies, uh, which are, you know, three different sets of references as well as using the headphone reference. And the coolest little reference, like if it's going to sound like garbage on your phone, make sure it sounds like good garbage. I got this actually out of a Coors Light case of beer. Awesome. And this little reference speaker, it's like a little two or three inch, uh, I think it's a two inch speaker. And I just put through that, oh, we'll go you that know, far, right? Look at 
Check that out. Yeah, just Budweiser just to, rocks. Yeah, just to, just to get a little phone reference type of type of mix, right? So I mean, you just you want it to sound good on all mediums. Um, the cool thing about this system here, and I, like I said, I upgraded a few years ago. This whole the main recording system, which is this Mac and this uh, Pro Tools system all came from Metalworks out of Toronto. So Metalworks out of Toronto, I mean, everybody from Celine Dion to Guns N' Roses to Rush to, uh, I don't know if Whitesnake, I don't know. I, I went in there anyway, like all these gold and platinum records, right? And when I bought this, I said, well, who played through this system? And he said, well, take a look at the ball, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So all those big name artists played through what's sitting down here now. Whether it makes anybody sound any better, I don't know, but it's kind of cool to, you know, for the story. Um, that being said, the biggest acquisition, so I got this, which was an upgrade. Uh, this came from Metalworks too, this, this uh, Focusrite producer pack, which is a, just a killer, killer preamp. It's probably one of the best. Um, so this is, this is my main tracking preamp. Uh, I've also got a Focusrite uh, Octopre, which is an eight channel. Um, I've got this Yamaha A channel as well. Don't really get it as far into that as much um, because I was lucky enough, if you go down here, and I don't know if the cameras are going to catch this, uh, but down here is 12 channels of uh, GP2 mic pre's. Now these mic pre's, do you know who Daniel Lanois is? No, sir. Daniel Lanois is was, is the producer, or was the producer for Bob Dylan and U2, and uh, like big, 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 and and these he he's from Hamilton originally. His brother Bob Lanois built all the mic pre's for Daniel to use to track U2 and Bob Dylan and blah blah blah. So these are hand built, one of a kind mic pre's from Bob Bob Lanois. Well, right, so. I've got 12 channels of these. So these these are my main tracking mic pre's now. Um, how I got these, these were uh, specifically built for Sean Drover from Megadeth. And then Sean Drover uh, gave them to his brother Glenn Drover, the guitar player from Megadeth. <laughs> and Glenn now lives in the county, won't say where, but just for his own privacy. Uh, so I got them off Glenn, and now they're here in, in the basement. In the basement. In the basement. In the studio. Yeah. yeah. So these right. these these Mike Prees are one of a kind. They're like top 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 of the line, top of the line. You can't get any better than this. Um, so yeah, all this all the uh, equipment down here is all world class, and uh, that's what I'm tracking. And the cool thing is, as far as announcements go, I'm now branching out into starting to open this back up to do projects you know? and and it's not going to be like like the rap stuff i'm not interested in doing but stuff that's real organic that's real soulful that's that's meaningful and it's good like yeah i'd be open to tracking it down here um who else have you worked for in the past uh well ronan Big chris names. ronan chris murphy uh is one guy that i work with uh he's based out of is he still in Los Angeles? He's in California anyway, in the Los Angeles area. Worked with, worked under him and worked with him for a little bit. Uh, he was a producer or at least engineer for King Crimson. He works with Tony Levin and uh, Steve Stevens and all those guys. Uh, so he's a pretty big deal. Um, worked with Stacey Hayden on the Love That Girl record, which uh, was way back in the day. Had a couple of 45s out back in the 80s that actually cracked the top 100 Canadian charts. Maybe for a, a week or so, like it wasn't a, that big of a deal, but you know, just to say that was done. Um, yeah, and on on the Love That Girl record, there was Freddie Kirchy, the singer from Sheriff, helping me on backups. He was backing me up, and the guy was just amazing. Uh, Greg Critchley from the Kim Mitchell Band was on drums. Um, Asher Horowitz from Lisa Del De Bello played some guitar on it. Um, shit, who else was on there? Couple other guys, the bass player and the keyboard player, I can't remember. Uh, but they were some pretty big names too. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, so. um, tell us about the decibel levels when you're recording. What's how do you record? Uh, yeah, if if you're looking, you at, can work that with your volume. Or well, as far as as far as, as far as inputs, I mean, obviously the way to track, right? You you need a microphone in front of a sound source. The microphone is going to pick it up 
feed into a preamp preamp brings that level up so you can set the recording level and then the software like the pro tools system that i'm using actually records what you're putting into it so if you're talking about decibel levels i mean here's here's unity which is zero um, <clears throat> you can see there's the green area and then it's a yellow area and then there's a red area you want to get it probably peaking around the zero uh, level on the yeah, way in. Otherwise, it'll right? turn red for peaking. Well, it. yeah, and, and with digital, like as soon as you distort it, there's nowhere else to go, right? No. If I'm tracking to tape, which I've still got tape machines back here, I just had my Tascam 8 track half inch refurbished, so that one's ready to get back up, which is going to be a cool story because problem to the solution. Do you remember those guys back in the day? They were three piece, like a Pantera kind of. Oh, wow. Vibe, yeah, really good. They put out a couple albums. Their last album was recorded here onto that 8-track. And uh, we've been looking for this reel-to-reel -reel for that album. This one for, here? Yeah, this, this Tascam back Look here. Look at that. Right? That is state of the yeah. art. Yep, and I just, had, man. Yeah, I just had this refurbished by, by a tape guy up in Toronto uh, who was also commissioned to actually refurbish Les Paul, the original Les Paul, the guitar marker. He got into building recording systems as well. So they flew him into New York a few times to actually refurbish his machines. And this is the guy that refurbished mine, wow. right? So that is impressive. So getting back to problems to, to the solution, uh, Chris Whalen and I, Chris was the bass player, we've been searching for that master tape with all the individual tracks on it for probably a good 20 plus years. Never did know where it ended up with. He phoned me about it two weeks ago. He says, I found it. Wow. So we're bringing that tape back in here, and we're going to remix the album. And, awesome. And, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's really good. You, really good. What What's the uh, pros and cons with digital and pros and cons with uh, analog? Uh, pros and cons. Um, I, don't, I don't really think there's, there's cons to digital, so long as it's done right and it's tracked on the way in properly. Um... From that point, once it's in the box, there's so many plugins that you can use as well as outboard gear to manipulate it. Oh, yeah. Like yes. the, the sky's the limit. You can do it anything with it. The cons, I guess, for tape is that you got to be real knowledgeable about how to track the tape. And then once it's on tape, um, you're pretty well just kind of regulated to whatever outboard gear you have if you're staying in the in the analog realm if you fly it like if you track it to tape and then fly all those tracks into digital well then now you've got that worthness of the tape and you don't have sound. to cut them physically right and yeah yeah and then now you can do all the editing the processing the mixing Cutting blah blah there, blah right? in the digital realm and then yeah you're good the thing i like about there's there's something uh very characteristic about tracking to tape there's just some, and and nobody can ever put their finger on it, and everybody goes, well, it's just warmer. I don't know if warmer is a, is an actual term that that really fully describes what tracking to tape is, but there's just something that it's just it's just got that thing, right? Whereas digital, it just is what it is. Digital to me has always been a little bit harsher. Uh, tape, it's a little more warmer. It's a little more. Uh, kind of a rounder sound it's not as shrill it's not uh it, it, and, and it has its own how can you tell you can you just, just hear it. it you can just hear it yeah you just hear it yeah so, yeah and there's something something bigger and thumpy i remember when i was working with stacy hayden uh and for those that don't know stacy hayden was uh the guitar player for david bowie and then he went on to have a big production career producing sheriff and parachute club i believe it was teenage head uh, so yeah, he was he was really proficient in, in the studio and, and uh, well known as well. And he always told me that he liked big old con uh, analog consoles to mix on because he turned they had a thump, and that's basically that analog sound. It's it's just I love that word. It's, Lots it's, of volume. He, no, there's there's Lots there's there's the like you know, if, yeah. If you hear a like that's a that's yes. a right. Whereas a it's deeper it's got it's it's deeper right and that's something that analog just has over digital so comparing vinyl to tape old tape is there a difference in vinyl and you know i mean the purists would say absolutely um 
if you're playing on ten thousand dollars speakers maybe you can hear a difference if you're playing on just you know your 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 pioneer system that you got back in 1995 i don't know if you'd really hear a difference other than the snap crackle and pop is still there on the vinyl right i Whereas, tell you i was at a buddy's house years back and he had these five foot uh, mirages on the okay screen. yeah you heard of mirages with yeah, the speakers oh yeah, on yeah, both sides yeah. and he tells me sit on the couch he says no sit in the middle Close your eyes. Yeah. He put on Pink Floyd, The Animals, and I swear the Gl the Clydesdale horses were coming through the snow. Yeah. And oh my God, when I heard the dog bark, yeah. I thought it was outside the door. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I I've said, uh, a buddy of mine's got like just a killer system, and the same thing. He put on Porcupine Tree, uh, their latest. What what the hell's the name? I I don't know what the uh, name of the album is. But I knew as soon as he didn't even tell me who he was putting on, right? From the opening note, I was like, oh, it's Porcupine Tree, right? And Porcupine Tree, if you're not, don't know who that band is, go no, check them out because they Porcupine. are freaking amazing. Where are they from? Uh, basically, based out of England. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Um, and just with his system like stuff was just blowing all over the place and behind your head and in front of you and to the side it was just a, an amazing experience he said and and basically you gotta you gotta experience that with your eyes closed just let everything go forget about everything make sure your phone's turned off and just just let it take it take you on a deep dive into that sonic atmosphere and it's it's mind-blowing i mean that's that's the beauty of music really right absolutely yeah, I mean, there's so many genres, there's so many styles, there's so much. Oh yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. To uh, appreciate Pro it. Probably down here, uh, my best experiences after all was said and done, and you finally, it's like, it's done. You you just get this feeling. It's like there's nothing more I can do. I can, I could, but I'm not gonna mess with it. Cause this is it. Like it just sounds the way it's supposed to sound. That's how right? it's got to sound. And in then, the basement. Well, right. And usually this happens at about two or three in the morning after the fourteenth time that you've listened to it, just to make sure, right? Exactly. And then, then I dim the lights down here and I crack a bottle of wine, pour a glass of wine, just sit back Celebrate. and I'll sit back in the sweet spot in the control room and just crank this system up and just let it rip. And and you just sit there and you just become immersed in all of this musical energy, man. And it's, there's there's nothing no greater high than that fantastic absolutely, absolutely. so who do you got coming uh, to record in the in, in the basement in soon? the basement well like i said i mean i've i've just finished this cover to cover album right uh i'm in the midst of of doing a lot of live work so i mean as far as tracking in here um schedule wise i haven't been able to schedule anybody in yet but that's coming um, probably the the next project will be back to the Rose City Rockers, but the new version um, with the new players and stuff like that. And if you want to go into the live room, man, we'll continue the yeah, conversation. Like we'll talk about bands. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. In the basement with Jimmy G, the man with three bands. He's going to tell you all about it. Thanks that's, for having me. That's right. We're but now we're in the live room. The live the room. The live room where the live stuff takes exactly. place, right? It doesn't matter. Live if interview. Recording live yeah, exactly. or playing, talking, or talking about live bands. This is where live. it happens. So this is a great setting to do this, right? Thanks. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Where do you start? I mean, shit, I've been playing in bands for, uh, for forever, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, and uh, this place has always been kind of a place where we've done a lot of rehearsing and stuff like that. But the latest bands that are out right now, the main band that I'm in is called Wits End. Yes. We, Very we're good coming band. up coming up on our second year, uh, which will be in July. Been together for two years. Um, we're playing. Jeez, uh, we've got like 35 plus nights booked this year for 2024. So yeah, it's pretty good accurate for you. band. Yeah, and uh, just just love playing with those guys. Really professional players, and uh, we sound good. And we just go out there and just put on a concert, right? As far as the you know, just being a bar band. Um, so that's that's that band. And then I've got a duo with Walter Riggy, and he's on piano. I'm on acoustic guitar, and we play kind of uh, what we like to call campfire drinking campfire. Sing, sing along songs right? awesome and uh, we just we just have a blast I mean Walter and I have so much fun in this in this thing I think we probably have more fun than anybody even in the audience we're laughing and just cutting oh, jokes yeah. and and we He's get everybody character. singing along with the songs and all that sort of stuff too so that's that's a great time and that's called the Muskoka Nights 
and you can find that band as well as Wits End on Facebook. Uh, Wits End is Wits End Rock Band, so Facebook.com Wits End Rock Band, and then uh, Muskoka Nights is uh, Facebook.com backslash TMK Nights. That's that page for that. And then the one I'm really excited about because after years of having this in my head. Finally, I got the gr the perfect players for this new project called the Row City Rockers, and we were talking about that a little bit earlier. Uh, finally, it's going to be a live band. Congratulations. Three-piece three -piece power trio uh, with Joe Riom on drums as well as backup vocals and Mike Muscat on bass as well as leading backup vocals as well. And uh, we're, we're just bringing the heat, man. It's like a power trio doing everything from Deep Purple to Robin Trower to Uriah Heap. Uh, the Who, like just just the good old '70s awesome, bangers, awesome. right? So yes. yeah, yeah, Classic and uh, yeah, we're finest. really we're really excited about that, and uh, we've got geez, I think 12, 13, 14 shows already booked for that band too. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, lots of good stuff happening. Perfect. Lots uh, of good stuff. So uh, other than guitar, what else can you play? Yeah, I play well. I play bass. Uh, I kind of play keyboards a little bit. I'm a better keyboard programmer. Yeah, well, yeah. I can I can play what I need to play, and then uh, obviously once it comes to the studio stuff, then I reprogram all my little mistakes <laughs> and make it sound professional. And I can play drums too, but I only know two beats, and nobody wants to hear either <laughs> one. So <laughs> that's why that's why I'm a guitar player, not a drummer. Do you have any but, originals? Uh, yeah, I've I've recorded a lot of originals over the time. Um, in this very room, right? Yeah, in this room. Um, the big thing is, is that, uh, like, it was way back in the '80s when I was doing a lot of original stuff. Haven't really written anything until the last couple of years, and now I'm like, I'm. I just love blues rock, like the Joe Bonamassas and Eric Steckles and Anthony Gomes and Tony Springer and all those like just great blues rock type of acts, right? Even Colin James and that sort of thing. Um, so that's really where the writing is now and uh, with the Rose City Rockers launching out and once we get our feet kind of firmly planted within the scene, we're going to be back in the studio and uh, writing, a, writing a new album. So fantastic. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. thanks for having me on John, in your been, studio is, in the basement. It, it, glad to have it you down in the basement. This guy, go <laughs> see him tonight at Average Joe's. Wits End, be there. We're, we're there all weekend. All weekend. Tonight and tomorrow night. Fantastic. Yeah. And then next week we're at Charlie's. So if, right. if you can't get out there this weekend, Charlie's uh, next Thursday and Saturday. Fantastic. Yeah, for and, the long uh, weekend. And the other bands? And the other bands, uh, the Muskoka Knights, we're, not, we're off until uh, next month, April. And then uh, the Rose City Rockers, the debut... It's going to be they April do. 27th Gotta at the Lion's there. Head. So, uh, Rose City. Yeah, rockers. That, that's going to be a banger, man. He's a rocker. That's right. All right, please add and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button right away. And upcoming, our next with Mike McCann and the Canada South Blue Society. You're going to have him on uh, next podcast. Uh, he's going to let us know what, who's coming, upcoming artists. Stay blues. Stay true. <laughs> Bewildered. Be back for more. Thank you.